Hi, and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how to use some ifs, average ifs, and the count ifs function when underwriting real. Now, if you're unfamiliar with these functions, they're cousins to their sum if, average if, and count if function. Only these functions allow for multiple variables when counting, summing, or averaging in Excel. And one place where I use these functions is when I'm manipulating or underwriting a rent roll. As an example, this week I was working on a portfolio with multiple properties and over a thousand tenants. And so what I have is different tenant types in different buildings, and I wanted to be able to uh, analyze certain tenants. What, what is, for instance, the, the rent of a certain tenant in a certain property? And using these functions is a great way to do that type of analysis. So here I've, I've developed just a quick exercise. This isn't a model you'll necessarily use, but it will serve the purpose of illustrating how I use these functions. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will be uh, sorting by building and by tenant type. And in this case, I'm going to have five rows for my five buildings. And here are my buildings, right? So I have a uh, building zero, which is where our anchor space is. I've got building one, two, three, and then I have an out parcel. So what I do first is I take from my rent roll, I copy and then I paste as values all of these all of these different buildings, and then I'm going to go to the data ribbon. I'm going to hit this remove duplicates, and then I'm going to remove all of the duplicates. And what it leaves me with are the five buildings that I have. Now I could have just written those by hand, but when you're dealing with a very large rent roll, you may have a lot of properties, you may have a lot of buildings, or a lot of tenant types, or whatever variable that you're working with. And that's just one quick and easy way to cut it down to the five that you have. So then I have number of tenants, okay? And what I really wanna understand is how many anchor tenants, for instance, are in building zero? Uh, how many inline uh, tenants greater than 1,500 square feet are in building zero, okay? And in order to do that, I need to be able to sort uh, or select a tenant type and then have this cell output the number of tenants in this building based on that tenant type. And I'm gonna do that with a drop down menu right here. So the first thing I wanna do though is I want to create a data validation list. So again, I'm gonna do this trick. I'm gonna copy my tenant types. I'm gonna come down here, hit Alt H V V. I'm gonna to go to my data tab, remove duplicates. I remove those duplicates. I'm just gonna copy those. Actually, I'm gonna leave those right there. And now I have a list. This is a data validation list. I'm gonna come up to this little blue cell that I've created. I'm going to go to, again, the data ribbon to data validation. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to allow a list. And the source of that list is that data validation list that we created. Okay, hit enter. And now we have a drop down menu of our five tenant types. And so let's just quick here, let's change to an anchor. And so what I want to uh, have output in this particular cell is how many anchor tenants are in building zero. And I'm gonna use a count ifs function to do so. So I'll type count ifs, and then it, it asks first the, for the criteria range. Well, the criteria is tenant types. The range would be all of these tenant types. So I'm gonna select all of those, hit F4 to lock those in place. So when I copy down, it won't move that list. Hit comma, and then it asks for the criteria, okay? And the criteria in this case is located in this cell. I'll hit F4 to lock that in place, hit enter. And right now, all we've created is a count function, right? We have counted the total number of anchor tenants in the rent roll, but that's not what we're wanting to know. We're wanting to know the number of anchor tenants in building zero. And in order to do that, we continue with our count ifs. So we ended with this, and if you want, you can end, uh, but we don't want to because we want to then understand the second criteria. So we go to criteria two, we select all of our buildings, and then we choose as our criteria the building in this list, and I'm going to make absolute the column by hitting F4 three times, but leaving the row relative so as I copy down, 
the cell will move with the copy. And so we see there's one tenant in building zero, there's one anchor tenant in building zero, but in the other buildings, hitting control C, copying down to here, there are zero in the rest of these buildings. Okay, and you see these formulas copy down well, and then I'm just going to finish, I'm gonna call this total, and I'm going to sum those. The result now, so I can come back to this drop-down menu, select, say, inline greater than 3,000 square feet, and there are five, two in building one, three in building three. So that's the count ifs. Now let's do the sum ifs. So the sum ifs is like the sum if, only we have multiple variables. So first we do sum ifs, and this is slightly different from the count ifs because it first asks for the sum range. Now if you're familiar with sum if, it actually asks for your sum range at the end of the function. If, with some ifs, it comes at the front. So what are we summing? Well, we're summing square footage. Lock that in place with an F4. And then it asks for our criteria, and the criteria are going to be identical to our count if, ifs. First criteria oops, is, is yeah anchor type, F4, F4. Second criteria is building, F4. F4 three times, one, two, three. Hit enter. There are no square feet of inline space greater than 3,000 square feet in building zero. But in these other buildings, there are, such that there are 22,450 square feet of inline tenants greater than 3,000 square feet. 75,000 in anchor and then one tenant there, right? And now we, we're, we're starting to see the power of these functions. Finally, I'm going to show you the average ifs. Now, I recognize that we could simply take, in this, in this uh, cell, take the square footage divided by the number of tenants and get the average square footage. Maybe we got to use an if error, right? Oops. Just to clean this up, we do an if error and zero. OK, right? We copy that down. And we get the average. However, we want to use the average ifs uh, just for illustration purposes. So I'm going to show you that right now. Equals average ifs. And it is identical to the sum ifs, only the result is different. So it's the average of square footage. Our criteria one, again, is tenant type. Criteria two, building. And then again, it gives us an error because there are no values to average. And so I'm going to use the if error, open parentheses, if error, if this logic results in an error, we're going to set this value to zero. I'm just going to copy those down. And then to finish this, because that's what we want to do, I'm going to use a sum product, even though I know there's an easier way. I'm going to use a sum product here to get the weighted average or the average for this. We, we don't want to use just the average, right? Because you got one tenant here and two here, but there's obviously an easier way to do it. Do that. There you go. So that is the sum ifs, count ifs, and average ifs function. I'm going to finish up uh, this little table here and uh, feel free to download the, this little exercise and practice on your own. And thanks for your time.